Hey everyone, welcome back to JFK, where we'll be catching a flight in business class with Air France today. In this video, I'll be trying out the French flag carrier's all new business class product to Paris, spending a few hours in their Terminal 2F lounge, and then seeing what their Eurobiz service is like to Romania. Air France operates out of Terminal 1 at JFK, and their check-in desk can be found at the far right of the terminal. You're allowed to check two bags weighing up to 70 pounds each for free when you book a business class seat, and this also entitles you to use the priority check-in counters. Check-in was a breeze, and I was also able to use the priority security screening lanes, which was great because going through security in Terminal 1 can be a huge pain. JFK is currently going through a $19 billion overhaul, and a new 26-gate Terminal 1 is scheduled to open in 2026. All right, so we made it through security. There was a bit of a mess. Hopefully that gets upgraded with all this construction that's going on. So now let's uh, head to the lounge. Hopefully I can take a shower. The Air France Lounge is open to both Sky Team Business Class passengers and Priority Pass members. It has a fairly modern and open design with plenty of natural light. The lounge is roughly 10,000 square feet and spread across two levels. There's buffets on both levels with a nice selection of hot and cold options. And if you'd like to grab a drink, there's an espresso machine, tea, soft drinks, juice, and a selection of wine and liquor. So this is the second time that I've been in this lounge. The first time was a few years ago when I flew Azerbaijan Airlines in business class and made my first ever YouTube video. Although I wouldn't recommend watching that one because it's pretty bad. So the lounge is pretty busy today, but I did manage to grab a shower and change into a fresh pair of clothes. So I'm really happy about that and feel a lot better about taking a long flight across the Atlantic today. This will also be my second time traveling with Air France. I flew with them my first time a few years ago aboard their A380 in economy, and I enjoyed it, so I have high expectations for today's flight. I enjoyed my time in the lounge, and about 45 minutes before boarding, I decided to leave and do a little plane spotting. Air France currently operates the Boeing 777 and the Airbus A350 to JFK and I'll be traveling aboard this A350-900 to Paris today. Air France ordered 28 of these planes in 2013 and received their first one in 2019. Last year, they placed another order for an additional 50 A350s, which they'll begin to receive in 2026. This has all been in an effort to replace their older A330s and 777s. After wandering around for a while, I headed to the gate, where boarding started promptly at 4.45. And since I was in Group 1, I was amongst the first passengers allowed to board. This A350 has 48 business class seats and a 1 2 1 layout. And I'll be sitting in 4A for this evening's trip across the Atlantic. Air France also has A350s which have 34 business class seats in an offset configuration similar to what United has in their Polaris business class, but this aircraft has been outfitted with their all new redesigned reverse herringbone seats. So we're now on board this beautiful A350-900, so let's take a look around. First off, there's a great amount of legroom and plenty of space in the footwell even when the seat is in bed mode. Next to the footwell there's a small storage compartment as well as the literature pocket. You can also find a universal outlet over here as well. There's a massive 20-inch anti-glare full HD 4K touchscreen in front of you, which folds out like this. Each seat has a privacy door, which is unlocked once the plane reaches cruising altitude, and an armrest which is adjustable. The tray table is large and easy to put into place. My seat had a large ledge next to the window, which had a wireless charger along with USB-A and C ports above it. There's a second storage compartment located off to the side, which houses noise-canceling headphones, a bottle of water, and a headphone jack. You can find the seat controls down here below the armrest. 
There's also a tablet which has a number of features like acting as a remote for the IFE system. It can also adjust the seat, lights, and window shades. And above the tablet there is a nice reading light. There's additional reading lights up above you as well as a little screen which shows you if the lavatories are occupied. There weren't any air nozzles, but I thought the cabin temperature was comfortable throughout the flight. The A350 also has very large overhead bins, so there was plenty of space for my carry-on bags. When I got to my seat, there were a number of items waiting for me, including some slippers, a pillow, and a blanket. I have a really good first impression of this seat. I think it's beautifully designed. It's very spacious. I don't feel claustrophobic at all. Um, this crew's really nice. The service has been really good so far. So, so far so good. Shortly after we had taken our seats, the crew offered everyone some non-alcoholic welcome drinks. We could choose between water and this juice. They also gave everyone menus. Flight attendants just handed out an amenity kit. We had a choice between a gray one and a blue one. The amenity kit was stocked with a variety of items, including an eye mask, a pair of socks, a pen, a toothbrush and toothpaste, and some moisturizer and face cream by Clarence. In all, it was a very solid amenity kit. Today, you came today. Well, first officer, Quentin Blasi, we are very pleased to welcome you aboard this Airbus A350 Air France bound from Paris Charles de Gaulle. We will be fully ready within the next few minutes. Flight time, uh, 5 hours on uh, 55 minutes, weather on arrival is fair, temperature 17 degrees Celsius, 63 degrees Fahrenheit. I leave you on the good care of Madame Anne-Sophie Valfra, not even on issue of our present flight. We pushed back from the gate on time and headed out to the runway. Air France operates multiple flights each day between JFK and Paris, but they also have a daily service between Newark and Paris. So if there's any New Jersey residents watching this, that might be a good option for you. Once we reached cruising altitude, I reclined the seat into a more comfortable position. You can also turn the seat into a fully flat bed. My one complaint about the seat though would be the positioning of the controls. Since they were so close to the armrest, I was constantly bumping into them by mistake and involuntarily moving the seat. So we've now reached cruising altitude and whoops, the seats. I noticed a lot of other passengers having the same issue, and some people kept accidentally calling the flight attendants. Alright, so we're up in the air now. Uh, the crew came around and gave everyone some champagne and these little cheese crepes. I think that's what they were. They were really good. They also dimmed the windows and took everyone's order for dinner. They also made sure that everyone was comfortable in their seat. They explained the seat controls and just answered any questions that we had, which was really nice to see. They are very nice. And as I mentioned before, once we reached cruising altitude, our privacy doors were unlocked. Dinner was served about an hour and a half after takeoff. Everyone received the same appetizer, which was lobster served alongside a smaller salad. We were also given a larger salad, a selection of cheese, and some bread. The dessert was also on the tray, which was the San Sebastian cheesecake. For my main, I ordered the prime rib with demi-glaze sauce, which came with mixed grains and pan-fried vegetables. Overall, I really enjoyed the food, and I thought they did a good job with the presentation as well. I've seen some other reviews which complained about the food being served on trays, but I really didn't mind, although my taste might not be as refined as some other YouTubers out there. And a little bit later, the crew cleared everything away and offered us all tea and coffee. Once dinner was over, I headed to the lavatory. There's nine lavatories on this plane, and the ones that I visited were always nice and clean. The business class lavatories were also stocked with some amenities from Clarins. Once I got back to my seat, I decided to take a better look at the IFE system. 
There was a nice selection of movies and TV shows, but Wi-Fi was available and you could purchase packages to surf the web if you wanted. However, messaging was offered for free. I was able to find something to watch pretty easily, and I even used the headphones that were provided. Normally I'll use my own headphones, but these ones worked well for me. And then the cabin lights were dimmed a little bit later. Oh, I'm in my own little cocoon right now. It's really comfortable. I'm really enjoying it so far. We've run into some a little bit of turbulence, but the crew's been coming around and checking on everyone. They're really very attentive. At this point, I turned my seat into a bed and truly appreciated how private and spacious this business class suite really is. I was able to lie on my back and side without issue, and my feet didn't feel constrained at all by the footwell. This was a major complaint that I had about United's Polaris business class, where my feet were really crammed in the footwell. Breakfast was served with about an hour and 20 minutes left in the flight. Everyone received the continental breakfast, which consisted of some yogurt, fruit, and a croissant. I could have also ordered an omelet, but I wasn't very hungry. So we just finished up breakfast and we have under an hour left in the flight. And overall, I really enjoyed this flight. I thought this plane was very comfortable to fly on. It didn't get too warm. The seat was also very comfortable. I, I really enjoyed it. The crew was very nice. We're all great time. I was scheduled to have about a three hour layover here in Charles de Gaulle Airport before my connecting flight to Bucharest. Although it was going to be pretty tough to fly in a Eurobiz cabin on a narrow body after such a great trip aboard this A350. Transferring within Charles de Gaulle took a really long time the last time I was here, but it was quick and easy this morning. And I'm at the gate now. The whole transfer process really didn't take long at all. It really wasn't bad. So now I'm going to uh, head to the lounge. Located just past security, the Air France lounge is open daily from 5.30 in the morning until 10 o'clock at night and is used by Air France and its Sky Team partners for all Schengen flights. To enter, you need a same-day business class ticket or have frequent flyer status with Air France KLM or you can buy a lounge pass for 60 euros. Opened in August of 2021, the lounge is 32,000 square feet and spread out over two levels. The large curved windows offer plenty of natural light as well as some great views over the tarmac. There's a luggage storage room, seating for around 600 people, as well as relaxation rooms. On the first floor, there's a detox area which has herbal tea and other soft drinks. And on the second floor, you can find the Clarence Spa where passengers can book a free 20-minute treatment. The second floor is also home to 10 shower rooms, which are large and have all the amenities you would need. All right, so I made it to the lounge and I actually got a shower. So I have a couple hours to kill and I'll probably just get some uh, something to eat and some coffee. You can find multiple self-service buffet counters in the lounge, and breakfast was being served while I was there. There's also a bistro corner, which apparently features some kind of live cooking by a chef, but there wasn't much activity going on during my visit. Beverage stations are positioned on both floors as well, and there are also a number of self-service alcohol stations. For me, however, it was a bit too early for alcohol, but I grabbed a plate and spent the next few hours catching up on some work and relaxing. This lounge is beautiful and it was a great place to pass the time before my next flight, but eventually it was time to head to Romania. For the final leg of my journey, I'll be flying aboard this A321. However, things didn't start off so smoothly. Our plane was late in arriving, so our boarding time got pushed back a few times. The terminal was really crowded this morning, so things got a bit chaotic and people kept on trying to cut in line. Boarding started eventually though, and I was eager to get on the plane. For those not too familiar with inner European business class, it typically consists of economy class seats with the middle seat blocked off. There were four rows of business class seats in this cabin, and I'll be sitting in 2A. The leg room was the same as you'll get in economy, which was fine, and there was plenty of space in the seat back pocket. 
The tray table folds down like this, and there was even a cup holder attached to it. The seats also reclined and had adjustable headrests. There was also a coat hook, as well as overhead reading lights and air vents. We didn't receive any welcome drinks, but we did get these moist towels. Uh, we are allowed to leave our stand in five minutes from now. It's uh, uh, departure time imposed by the air traffic control. We ended up being delayed due to air traffic control staffing shortages and pushed back an hour behind schedule. Air France and Skyting Partners wish you a pleasant flight. Air France operates a fleet of all four variants of the Airbus A320 CEO family aircraft with a total of 114 jets. They're currently working on phasing out their smaller A318s and A319s and replacing them with the Airbus A220-300. As soon as we got up into the air, I reclined my seat and settled in for this roughly two and a half hour flight to Bucharest. The crew began serving the meal 20 minutes later. In economy, I noticed they were given either a ham or cheese sandwich, but we were served a quinoa salad along with asparagus and mozzarella as a main. This came with some bread, cheese, and a piece of chocolate cake. In all, not too bad for such a short flight. They also gave us some chocolate a bit later. Once the meal was cleared away, I looked for a way to pass the time. There's no IFE system on board, but there is Wi-Fi if you'd like to purchase a plan and surf the web on your personal device. Apparently some of these seats have USB ports, but I couldn't find any around me, but I did come prepared with my own charger. In the end, I just closed my eyes and tried to get some rest. Of course, it would have been nice to have been sat in the recliner-style seats that many US airlines have on their narrow bodies, but having a free seat next to me was great, I enjoyed the meal that was served, and the crew was also very nice. We'd like to offer sincere apologies for our delayed arrival. We thank you for flying with Air France. Air France and the Escalante Partners wish you a very nice day and a very nice stay in Romania. I had a fantastic time traveling with Air France in business class to Romania despite the delay. I've seen some negative reviews in the past about Air France, but I've only had positive experiences flying with them. I booked this trip for 70,000 miles plus an additional $200, and I think it was completely worth it. Air France's new business class suites on their A350s are great, and the transfer and lounge experience in Paris were stress-free and left me feeling relaxed. And while Eurobiz is basically just glorified economy, it was totally fine for such a short flight. Alright, so we finally made it to Romania. It was a long but nice journey with Air France. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.